Welcome back. You're watching The Big Story tonight. I'm joined by Okio Mtata, activist and, uh, of course, reformer. And we have Maurice Odora, senior investments manager at Site and Investment, appearing tonight as an economist. I will still stick with you, Maurice, uh, just picking it, up, picking it up from what Okio Mtata has said, that the, about 70 billion shillings of the government, six, um, can be... Uh, received, of course, from tightening the budget, do you think we will be able to arrive at the 70 billion by taxing um, these petro petroleum products? And how effective is this going to be? I think if you look at it in terms of financing of government uh, expenditure, the one of the elements that was working in the current budget, budget for the current fiscal year was the revenue that the government will get from the 16% the uh, VAT on the petroleum product. But now if you look at the way this act is likely to affect the life, the life of Kenya, the day-to-day -day operation of Kenyans, it's the cost of living going to increase, which means even the levels of consumption will have to reduce. So where we are in a situation where this, 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 this law may, 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 may result in be counterproductive in terms of helping government achieving what the intended objective was. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it in terms of do the government have option? I think yes, because the government now needs to come up with other more diversified ways of getting of, of, of enhancing revenue collection. Yeah. Okay. It has been long since the last time we heard about privatization, privatization of most of government corporations. I think government need to look at that. Again, we need to can come to ensure that we improve on administrat tax administrative procedures, but at least we get more most Kenyans coming to pay taxation. But the main thing we need to ensure that at least we live within our means in terms of recurrent expenditure, because. It look at it historically in terms of the budget turnout figures, outrun figures, we've been, uh, the absorption rate for current expenditure is usually more than 100%, but if you look at development expenditure, mm. is usually less than 100%. So in totality, we do diversify our revenue sources, and also to ensure that at least the money that we have, resources that we have, are used to, for efficiently for the benefit of Kenyans, uh, for the uh, provision of essential services to Kenyans. My colleague Sophia Anuna, while speaking to David D uh, yesterday, of course, asking him what he thinks about the state of the economy currently, David D said that we are at a very hopeless point and it's going to get worse. Do you share these sentiments, Maurice? Where we are, and again, borrow, coming, coming, uh, looking, look, looking at a point where what led us to where we are in terms of at borrowing levels, we are not in a crisis, but I think we are approaching there. So we need to be cautious in terms of how we are borrowing, especially the foreign debt. And again, you look at in terms of locally, government also has high appetite for borrowing, which, I mean, which means now we are crowding out the private sector. But if you look at all this in totality, if you look at in terms of infrastructure development, we need all this infrastructural development that the government is taking initiative in coming up with. But the big question should be, do we need all of them at the same time? And can we afford? If we can't afford them now, we scale them to a level where we can afford and so that we reduce the level of debt and continue running the affairs of the government. The next item that we need also to face in terms of the recurrent expenditure, which again need to reduce, are we, with the question that we need to ask ourselves as a country is that are we running as unsustainable uh, governance structure? Is this too expensive for Kenyans? If yes, then again we need to look and rethink about the governance structure so that most of the resources are channeled towards the provision of essential services to Kenyans and also ensuring that there's a long-term sustainability in terms of how we find and we run our affairs. Let's bring in activist Sukeo Mtata, who, of course, is filing a case in court uh, seeking the suspension of uh, the implementation of this particular bill. And, of course, in the long term, he's uh, looking at getting the courts to quash this very uh, bit of that particular bill on the uh, taxing of petroleum products. We've seen a number of reactions from members of parliament and even um, uh, senators Okeo Mtata and uh, a number of Kenyans, especially on social media, say what these leaders are saying are populist and very pretentious. What are your thoughts on the kind of reactions we've received so far from members of parliament with regards to this particular bill? Well, I think that uh, I, would be, I would be a bit slow to condemn anybody that they are being, they are being insincere because I have no evidence of that. All I can say is that parliament moved a bit slowly and they acted a bit too late because uh, the, this issue has been with them, and I think there have been newspaper commentaries going back to that time. And most, some, personally, I hoped that the parliament was going to address the issue and cure it once and for all. But uh, they delayed, and they were caught flat-footed where they were caught. 
So, but I, but I love their efforts that they, they did rise up to the moment and they did suspend, they did part, amend the finance bill and the, the amendment was basically to suspend the application of this VAT, the implementation of VAT on petroleum products. So to me, Parliament has done its part. But that as it may, I think the President was a, ma a major letdown in the, in the scheme of things and uh, he should have addressed this as a national issue unless if he quietly is in support of what is happening, especially looking at the body language of his ministers and the other technocrats that are acting with the, the kind of confidence that they can only say that it is the president who is acting through them. And so to me, what I would say is that I pray that the parliament sustains its momentum and goes, goes beyond just seeking to suspend the mm -hmm. bill mm -hmm. or to suspend the, the tax. Mm -hmm. It should, should abolish the tax on petroleum products, zero rate them, so that people can go into productive engagement because even that, even that 70 billion might not be realized. Mm -hmm. As the economists have said, the consumption we might, might reduce, might shrink. Mm -hmm. The economy is going to shrink. And nobody wants a small economy. We need an economy that is growing, where people are getting richer and there's prosperity. Yeah. And that can only be done where we lower the costs of production. Already when you look at what the, electric, the cost of electricity has done to, to Kenyans, is that it has made us uncompetitive globally. And today we live in a global village. So if you look at our energy costs compared to a country like Egypt, we are way out of place. Mm -hmm. Even countries like Uganda are now much better than we are. So it's not acceptable that the government should kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Mm -hmm. The government must facilitate okay. the creation of enterprise, the creation of new wealth by the ordinary people, especially the small-scale uh, small scale producers. And then, of course, you have got the question of protecting marginalized gr groups. Who uses kerosene? Two categories of people. One, and the most genuine user, is the poor person. In, the poor mama who has to cook for the family and buy this kerosene in bits of 10 shillings, 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are the crooks who use it for adulterating petrol. But for the purposes of this vulnerable group that depends on kerosene to, to, for, 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 for domestic use, we cannot afford to subject them to more pain, especially in circumstances whereby the loans we are paying have been subject to theft on the revenue side. Mm -hmm. You have a loan like the Eurobond that we are paying. The Eurobond has never made it to this country. It was mm -hmm. stolen. And I think a time has come when Parliament should sit down and, and audit the national budget and isolate which, which loans benefited the Kenyans and declare them sovereign loans. And also isolate which loans did not benefit Kenyans but were used by the regime mm -hmm. to, for various reasons and declare them regime loans and push that we shall only be responsible for the sovereign loans and the regime loans should be left to the regime and the owners of the regime to pay. Yeah. If we don't auction these people, mm -hmm. we are going to, to bind our children and grandchildren and okay. the future, future generations to a life of poverty All right. which, they are not a, which, they, which should not be the case. Okay. So my prayer is that Parliament rises up to the moment and addresses this crisis before okay. it gets out of hand. All right. Mr. Odwar, two things. Our growing appetite for loans and the wage bill that has currently hit the roof, what are some of the austerity measures you think should be introduced to cushion Kenyans uh, from what is being termed as a worse situation that we could find ourselves in in the next coming years? I think if you look at it, what you need to do, the first of all, we need to ensure that they are in the conducive environment for business in Kenya, to encourage entrepreneurship, to ensure there's a productivity, which will create jobs, and again, these people who are getting jobs will in turn pay taxes, that will help the government in financing its operation. The next thing, we need to look at our governance structure to ensure that it's lean and efficient, so that at least we are able to run our affairs within the revenue that we are collecting in, the, in, in as a country. Mm -hmm. The third thing, we need to, affect, to, to face the, our debt levels and ensure that it's sustainable and it's brought down to the level that even servicing will not cause crisis in the country. Mm -hmm. 
I want to take you back to something you said earlier on that this might be uh, counterproductive because if uh, the um, uh, if kerosene say kerosene, petrol, diesel, are going to be that expensive, then people or Kenyans will be relooking their budgets and not spending as much money on other things. With, it, with having the possibility of this being counterproductive, what would be the ideal way of going about this situation? If you look at where we were as a country, Kenyans are already sort of like taxed enough. And again, we can't add another layer of taxation, which we now add another burden to already burdened uh, uh, people. What we need to ensure that happens, no country develops by imposing, just imposing taxes on almost all aspects of economic activities. In fact, reducing taxation which will have more benefit as compared to increasing taxation because increasing taxation may end up prohibit, uh, reducing the levels of consumption. So we need to ensure that we need to ensure that the operating environment is conducive, the taxation at one level that is accommodative, taxation I ensure, taxation encourage productivity, mm -hmm. creation of jobs, setting up of enterprises that will now in turn fund for enable people to pay uh, to pay taxes for the government used for financing activities. Mm -hmm. But where we are, and this especially petroleum product which touches on almost all segments of the economy, it might end up to be counterproductive and not achieving the intended objective. How do we get county governments uh, to participate in ensuring that our budget is sustainable at the end of the day? If you look at it, the governance structure for Kenya, first of all, we look at the county governments. I think the county government, we need to sit back and ask ourselves, why did we come up with this governance structure and whether it's achieving the intended objective? <laughs> because the wastage of resources that we've witnessed so far is not the initial, it's not the objective of the county government to ensure that county governments are working for Kenyans and delivering the essential services closer to the people. That's number one. Then number two, we need to ask ourselves whether the, two, the, the, the system of governance that we have, is it working for the benefit of Kenya? Is it a bloated governance structure? Is it increasing the wage bill? If yes, then we need to look at it and reduce the area that we can, we can re remove area that we can, can be amended so that at least we be able to finance the operation of the government. At the same time, finance the development expenditure coming up with roads, infrastructure development that will inspire economic activities in mm -hmm. the country. I want us to quickly take a look at a bite or a reaction from Ann Waiguru, of course speaking for governors, as well as later on we'll be seeing uh, something else, of a snippet of something else from David Ndi's conversation with Sophia Wanuna last night. Let's take a look at that before we get back to this conversation. This particular policy is going to be very restrictive even for economic growth generally. It's not just going to increase the cost of living, but what it will do, it will also hinder economic growth, meaning we will be stuck in this cycle of, of never um, improving and getting out of poverty. What we have been doing is living beyond our means, uh, investing, borrowing money, uh, squandering a lot of it and investing the rest of it in things which are actually not going to uh, give us a, an economic return and um, now uh, the chickens begin to come home to roost so this is what we're experiencing um, we are experiencing the consequences of you know several years uh, the first the entire first term of, of, of jubilee government has actually been spent uh, digging Kenya into an economic hole. Yeah. Uh, so, it, and then once you do that, it takes quite a long time to dig yourself out. So it will take quite some time. Oh, it will take quite a while. Yeah, it will be several years of, right. of trying to dig yourself out. And of course, it also exposes you to fairly big risks, um, especially risks of uh, sort of financial uh, meltdown that you see in other countries in this situation. Well, David D says uh, we are exposing ourselves to bigger financial risks. Uh, Omtata, even as you file this particular case in court, what worries you the most about the implementation of uh, this tax regimen, of course, on petroleum products? Now, Governor Iguru has said is what, what captures my main sentiment that the cost of living is going to skyrocket and productivity is going to shrink. 
And that's a situation whereby then you have uh, basically a collapsing economy, which is, and then inflation, of course, it's an inflationary situation whereby what is happening in Venezuela can easily happen in this country. So I think time has come for a sober engagement with the question of taxation so that we do not kill the goose that lays the golden egg. And also, if you look at how reasonable it is what we are doing, that the, fuel levy, the, levies, on, the levies on fuel are almost accounting for 50% of the pump price. It's, not, it's, not, it's really ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. And yet this is, this, is, this, the, this, this, is the, this is the fuel, literally, that it drives the economy. And you load it with so many taxes, which means you are throwing a spanner in the works to make it not viable for the economy to be productive. So my biggest worry is that the country is, they, we are going to go back to the 90s, mm -hmm. where the economy had totally shrunk and could not survive. And then as, as the, the David Ndi has said, we are exposing ourselves to, to, to risks that we might ever, never be able to mitigate. Financial risks. We have got living examples. Look at the, the, what happened to the, Greek, to the Greeks. The Greek economy went under. Look at Argentina. Well, what happened to Argentina at one time? We have got Venezuela today. In our, what is happening in Venezuela? Just poor fiscal policies can destroy a great country. And our country is a great country. We don't want it to be destroyed. The best those who are in charge can do if they are not able to run the economy is to vacate office and let us get people who can run the economy, take over this country and run it. Because the only thing that matters in an economy, in a country, the, the main thing that matters in a country mm -hmm. is the way the economy is functioning. Mm -hmm. Without that, every other right will collapse. Mm -hmm. There will be no rights to, to defend because there will be no people with the wherewithal to, to enjoy those rights. All right. I want us to now um, engage Moses Lessonet, Member of Parliament for El Damaravin, now joining us. Um, he's also the Vice Chairperson of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Thank you, sir, for joining us here on The Big Story. Let's begin with your reaction. We've uh, seen a lot uh, from Members of Parliament. Uh, some have called for Kamkunji, some are calling for uh, protest. Some, like Ndindi Nyoro, say they're going to uh, form roadblocks in various parts of the country protesting this. What are your thoughts? Um, thank you very much. Um, my thoughts are actually very clear that uh, Parliament has made a, a decision last week uh, to suspend the application uh, of that uh, VAT on fuel, mm -hmm. and it's only waiting the assent of, uh, uh, of the President. So the question of blocking roads or the question of a Kamukunji does not arise at this time because Parliament has made a decision and it's only awaiting the president to do his part, mm -hmm. whether he agrees with us uh, or not. Mm -hmm. So maybe if the president will not agree with us in terms of uh, signing that bill, uh, then he will return it to parliament for further discussion in parliament. Mm -hmm. But for now, the law as it is, is VAT is now applicable uh, from 1st of September mm -hmm. until such time that the president uh, signs that law or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So that is actually the position as it is. Yeah. Nobody should block any road. Nobody should hold any Kamugunji because Parliament has already pronounced itself on that matter okay. uh, last week on Thursday. This is not the first time Parliament is uh, pronouncing itself on such an issue. This bill came up in 2013, was uh, suspended for about uh, three years to 2016, then again to 2018. If the President assents to this, we will now go to 2020. Isn't it time to just address this once and for all? We've been postponing it for, what, five years now and we're heading into another two years to 2020? Well, um, v VAT uh, basically is uh, applicable on most products in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it is only suspended to the extent of, uh, of fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, so for now, we cannot suspend the VAT Act uh, on everything, mm -hmm. other than now the fact that it's only suspended on, on fuel. And uh, Parliament is, is, is informed and, and they, are, they, they are comfortable with that suspension that we suspend for a further uh, two years up mm -hmm. to 2020. Mm -hmm. Probably at that time, uh, incomes may, may have improved that, such that Kenyans may be able to, to pay VAT at that time. And, and also just to, to say it, with this suspension of uh, VAT, uh, Kenyans should take cognizance that uh, projects or investments in Kenya, like roads, water projects, universal health care, they have to be financed through taxation. So as we suspend the VAT like Parliament has done, which we totally support, 
Equally, we expect government, if they agree with that suspension, that some projects in the budget passed in June will also have to be dropped. Mm -hmm. Some projects will have to be dropped, probably some roads, some water projects, some healthcare projects. They'll also have to come down because income for government revenue will, will, will drastically drop with, the, with this. Flash forward, if this comes up again in 2020, of course, if the president assents to this, we will most likely be having the same conversations we are having today. What is the long-term measure for handling this? I mean, you've been in parliament for a while. What are yes. your thoughts on that? Well, well I, I think government is doing a lot. Uh, we shall see the benefits of the fight on corruption, uh, which... Uh, we totally, as Parliament, support uh, the President and his government in the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely have seen the fruits of, of that war on corruption. And with the win on that war, the win on counterfeits, the win on contraband products, we'll definitely see a, a more growth, a more vibrant economy. And probably at that time, it may be necessary to totally suspend the application mm -hmm. of, of VAT on fuel. Mm -hmm. Like somebody said, of course, um, there is fuel levy, which equally is applied uh, on fuel for purpose of maintenance of our roads. Mm -hmm. And it may be necessary at that time, uh, if we win this war on corruption, that it may not even be necessary at that time to even apply fuel levy on, on fuel. And, and of course, we, we totally agree that this, this goes to the real common man, uh, uh, the, the, the cost of fuel, uh, and especially when we apply VAT and the fuel levy. There's concern that Parliament has been very slow in acting on this particular clause of, 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 of the VAT Act, of course, on the 16% um, uh, VAT on petroleum products, that this was just being passed a few days shy of the deadline. Yes. is a red light in itself, no? Uh, I, I agree with you on that, that um, uh, yes, we, we should have passed it much earlier in Parliament. But you need to appreciate that the finance bill is a very, very huge document. There is a lot that goes into it, a lot of public participation, a lot of consultation with stakeholders, and the need. I mean, th that, was, that was the shortest time we could take, that we were just passing it on 30th of, uh, th 30th of August. Yes, one day or two days shy of the deadline of, of 1st of uh, September. So it, it was basically because of all the consultation, the public participation, which have to be done on that finance bill. It's a very huge document cutting various acts of parliament. So many acts of parliament are, are, are attached in that finance, finance bill. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thank you very much for your thoughts and uh, joining us here tonight on The Big Story. That's how we wrap it up here tonight. I was joined by activist Okia Omtata, who's filed a case in court seeking for the suspension of uh, the implementation of this particular bill. And of course, in totality, his uh, prayers are that this bill will be quashed, especially the class on uh, taxing petroleum products by 16%. We also spoke to... Um, Maurice Odor, who's a senior investments um, manager at Saturn Investments, joining us in his capacity as an economist, saying it is time for the country to explore other options of being able to sustain its adjoining um, uh, wage bill, as well as uh, the big appetite on loans, saying that if that doesn't happen, we're heading into a financial risk sentiments that we've seen also from David D, an economist. And finally, Moses Lassonet, Member of Parliament, Eldama Ravine, Vice Chairperson, Budget and Appropriations Committee, admitting that really Parliament was slow on this, but on, on the way forward, if the President assents to this, then they will be looking at how we will not be having this conversation in 2020 if this is suspended in two years. Thank you for joining us tonight. Ben Kitili comes in next with Primetime News. My name is Akisa Andera. Have a good night. Stay with KTN News for more.